In this fifth and final part of the technology development series, we are going to talk about creativity, innovation, and future of technology development. Various new tools and new methods are being developed, and these new age technologies themselves are now changing the format in which technology development happens. This is basically the role that is being played in terms of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and how these and the cloud technology is being used for facilitating new technology development. What we understand is that when we are trying to talk in terms of new technology development, what kind of global R&D expenditure is being made defines how technology development happens in that particular place, how creativity is promoted, what large amount of investment goes into creating new ideas, basic sciences, how they are harnessed, and how it needs a huge and humongous amount of manpower in order to make those new discoveries, new inventions, and in turn, how it needs a lot of investment. If we see in this, United States even today is the leading power as far as the expenditure and manpower is concerned in R&D sphere. Sitting on top are two very small countries. Both are very important in terms of that one is in Asia and another is in Europe. Singapore and Finland, basically, we, who are spending much more percentage of their GDP on R&D and at the same time are having a massive amount of manpower compared to their own population for this particular purpose. And we also see that many countries in Asia, especially China, Japan, South Korea, Australia, Taiwan, India, and Indonesia, Malaysia coming up very speedily in trying to push manpower as well as expenditure on development of new technology and therefore the R&D expenditure is rising. But of course, the major impact that is being given in the terms of what expenditure is being made in Europe, basically Switzerland, France, Netherlands, UK, Spain, Italy, Poland, Sweden, and other particular countries. There's a unique one important area and one important country that is Israel, which is at the extreme right hand side, where compared to its population, compared to its this thing, the highest GDP percentage is being utilized for research. And that is giving us the understanding that they are highly R&D driven company and are therefore creating quite huge waves in this particular area. Now, as we are talking about this, technology development has resulted in various particular new technologies and gradually people have started talking in terms of technology development per se does not have all the benefits. So there is a new urge to do technology assessment. Why do you want to do and what for? Because our past experience has taught us that new technologies do not merely solve old problems, but often lead to new technology creation problems of their own, and many of which reveal themselves only with time. When the technology is deployed, when the technology is used over a gradual period of time, we understand what kind of side effects it brings in, what kind of cross effects it brings in, and therefore, given the transformative yet destabilizing potential of new technologies, it's critical to maximize our understanding of them and their effects, intended and unintended, as they are developed, introduced, and disseminated. While it would be naive to think that we can fully predict the course of technology's development and its consequences, Ongoing and methodical evaluation can help us to anticipate, avoid, manage, and mitigate adverse effects. These things have come to the fore because of three major, major technologies that have come up. Number one is biotechnology. It is a very strong technology domain, which is impacting 
not only new products like genetically modified food stuff it's impacting how stem cell research is going it's impacting how we are able to talk in terms of gene based therapies and it's also becoming a very important tool how viruses and other biological systems can be manipulated and can be developed they can and could have in future is very grave problems for the mankind similarly nanotechnology and of course cyber technology the amount of hacking software hacking the amount of computer hacking super computer hacking the network impacts and how internet connected things can be hijacked therefore these particular kind of technologies are proving that there is a necessity of assessing each technology as it is developed and how we can counter if there are issues connected with it the genetically modified varieties have become widely prevalent among major crops accounting for 80% of corn 92% of soya bean 86% of cotton and 93% of canola planted in the united states now you can understand how deep how wide and how major changes it's bringing into the food as well as commercial crops synthetic biology involves the synthesis of organic molecules not found in nature and the aim of creating artificial living systems or of facilitating the assembly of living organisms based on interchangeable genetic sequence is another particular concern while they have created new vaccines they have also created new organisms and the major controversy at the present moment about covid sars vaccine too is about whether it was leaked in a laboratory where such systems were being developed or it is come from the natural world so when we are talking about these therefore the technology assessment becomes very important and there are three phases of technology assessment basically what we are trying to talk in terms of what are the deterministic scope of doing technology assessment we perform initial situational analysis to inform scoping decisions determining and clarify what is the scope of the technology that we are developing what are the goals of why we want to develop it what are the problems associated with developing this technology and what would be the problems in order to understand if the technology is developed how it would manifest how it can be otherwise construed and if appropriate consider what is the known and not known about the technology the second phase is where we try to talk in terms of initial design so here we confirm and validate the plan scope prepare project documentation and review and reach agreement on initial design this means that we are selecting appropriate design design methodologies and analytical approaches so that we have good simulation results we have good analytical results and we have good emulation results available and appropriate data sources or need of data is required possible policy guidelines that need to be mentioned and informed to the government and the government intervention and regulatory mechanisms that need to be formulated possible policy options that will be considered and described how they may be analyzed and how they will be made applicable external experts to inform design implementation and assist in external review as appropriate and create a global awareness of these kind of issues and therefore a debate on various platforms both in terms of journals and in terms of seminars and conferences what are the pros and cons of these technologies and their development and the phase 3 is basically implementation of that design and that implementation it can have a review of the prototype and modify the design in if we find that there are certain particular problems and issues which can lead to some bad consequences and consider changes in the operating context all these particular iterative nature of technology assessment design requests interests and resources interdependence and interdisciplinarity engaging internal and external stakeholders potential challenges that these particular can have and what are the communication strategies to mitigate those particular challenges so we have these particular policy formulations for the government and evidence gathering from the public we can take a referendum from the public we can 
talk about it in open societies and we can talk having social, cultural, intellectual and spiritual or religious inputs on the technology development and what are the going to be the consequences. So basic thing that we are talking about is the major impact that's coming about in artificial intelligence and machine learning and how they are going to impact the future technology development. Basically, what are going to be the business objective of developing that AI tool or machine learning tool? And what are the key business objectives and goals for the initiative? What are the expectations from the management in long term? What is the value proposition to the business? How does it improve the quality of business? How does it improve the quality of the product? How does it improve the quality of service? And therefore, what business matrix it attracts and impacts? What are the key business matrices to be measured as a success factor? What is the relationship between business matrix and business goals? How are business matrix measured and reported? And therefore, what are the operational matrix? How are they defined? And what traceability do we have in these operational matrices? And what precise KPIs are being used? How to enable measurement and analysis of KPIs, business processes, how they are going to be modified, how they are going to be impacted, and what are the key performance indices? What are the best practices and that we have followed till now and how they have impacted and how they are going to be followed in this particular thing. Do we have any particular history of such particular developments and enable processes? Or what are the underlying data formats? What kind of data gathering will be there? How the reliability of the data will be there? And how those particular issues will be handled? And these data, data points, how they are going to be business secrets and how they are going to be handled. So these are the basic AI ML. Basically, what we are trying to talk in terms of that, as we said in technology development, basically we take an idea, a concept, a research, an innovation, and see how that can be converted into a product, service system, subsystem, or a new technology. So here we are trying to talk in terms of that can AI and ML assist us in doing that? Can we have a methodology of artificial intelligence by which we can filter out ideas which are fit for application for technology development? Do we have processes that can forewarn us that this kind of technology development will have these, these, these consequences and therefore we need these, these, these kind of mitigating roles? And simultaneously, can we have that if this particular machine learning is done, does it have certain biases? Does it have certain particular prejudices? Does it do the algorithms that were designed? Do the kind of conditionalities that were imposed? Do the constraints that were considered? Did they have the biases from the people who developed them? Or are they universal? Or are they open? Have they been taken from larger perspective? And so on and so forth. So we have this particular kind of where autonomous machines are concerned, autonomous systems are concerned and say face recognition had a very, very important aspect. And this did create quite a problem, both in defense as well as in criminal investigation in the United States and other particular places. So these are some of the factors that are challenging our understanding in terms of AI and ML technology development. So whether digital processes and intelligent process automation, that's hyper automation, how are cybersecurity meshing with these particular kind of developments? That means, is it possible tomorrow to have an AI system which could be hacked and which could turn upon against its own functions and therefore could not be controlled? Artificial intelligence engineering, what kind of data operations are being used? What model operators are having this thing considered? What development operations have been considered? What intelligent composable business models or business goals or business development philosophies have been embedded? Anywhere such kind of operations that have been enabling customers, services or ops, or is that kind of a data available? And are we going to go towards internet of behaviors? Are we able to talk in terms of why the people-centric internet of behaviors is going to be an important understanding of body language? And can that be reliable? 
is the body language across the globe same or are there nuances based on culture based on body development and things like that so we have got this grid of nine things which are trying to talk in terms of these special indicators internet of behaviors distributed cloud intelligent composable businesses ai engineering anywhere operations total experience strategy privacy and enhancing computing cyber security and basically digital process and intelligent process migration so the AI trends have been have had a lot of hype the artificial intelligence has been in the development phase for past more than three decades or four decades and the new developments that are happening in this particular as the cycle is maturing as products are developing as they are being used and the trend therefore is democratization of ai ai is no longer the preserve of high-tech labs or high-tech systems it is being permeating it's permeating down to ordinary things like cameras like digital cameras or smartphones or smart technologies translators photography and things like that so this application in industrial processes are we trying to talk in terms of that industrial processes are becoming smarter or buildings are becoming smarter where you can understand intrusion where you can understand energy consumption where you can optimize energy consumption and you can make very various systemic changes in the design of the self sufficient smart homes to optimize on these particular things how we are because of internet of things or internet of various techniques and not only things in technologies in internet of technology networks interaction of things and most important of all the cloud computing edge computing and digital transformation of the systems and digital transformation of i wouldn't of biological ingredients we are learning so much from biology the biology of the mind the biology of systems how neural networks interact and how that is impacting our real communication networks wi-fi networks and other particular things and therefore are we trying to create a responsible ai system which has better controllability better observability better inductability and better reliability so these are the reliability in the sense that it can be controlled as it will not become a burden on the human society so we are trying to talk in terms of these issues where we are having ai ml models and deep learning technology join in using learning algorithms and models along with data generated by the automated systems to allow the system to automatically improve over time and respond to changing business processes and requirements these are going to have therefore technology development on the fly technology development taking part and being self modifying systems self aligning systems self governing systems self orienting systems and they can that is where if they are permeating more and more into the common area of usage then how they are going to behave ai is no longer the exclusive subject matter of experts now organizations want to reach the next level of by delivering ai value to more people in the enterprise the target for democratization of ai may include support to customers business partners business executives sales people assembly line workers application developers and it operational professionals so whether it is a lawyer whether it's a doctor whether it's a surgeon or whether it is physician or whether it is a person who is designing something or design of cars design of spacecraft design of aircraft design of the smallest possible thing a small tool lens design of smartphone camera or lens design of a telescope all these particular things how ai is impacting wonderful so industrialization of ai of ai platforms enables the reusability scalability and safety of ai which accelerates its adoption and growth industrial decision intelligence indicates that companies want to use ai to make better decisions faster such as selecting best treatment options for patients or accelerating discovery and prevention of anomalies and vulnerabilities moreover new entrants on this year's hype cycle such as generative ai 
small data and composite AI indicates that in addition to machine learning, organizations are considering multiple means of supporting decision making with AI. This especially where we are trying to talk in terms of use of AI in surgeries, use of AI in controlling aircraft, autonomous vehicles, autonomous swarm of drones, and things like that. Of course, in military areas, they have been used extensively for during the past decade, where automatic target selection, automatic target identification, automatic target understanding, and things like that. Adoption for products, service development, or service operation in industries, industrial use, and industries cases in percentages showing increasing in and we are trying to talk in terms of how ai ml and cloud are merging together new various services and what are the adoption percentages in those particular areas say for instance ai based enhancement of products there are 24 percentage improvements in that product feature optimization 21 percent improvement service option optimization 24 percent improvement Predictive services and interventions, 19% improvement. Marketing, sales, customer service analytics, better decisions, customer segmentation, better understanding of how each segment is going to be defined and how it is going to be interacted. Risk management, one of the most important areas where we are trying to use AI is risk management, being able to simulate what situations can lead to risk and fraud and debt analytics, manufacturing, yield energy and throughput optimization, 15% predictive maintenance in systems, large, complex and highly specific human resource optimization of talent management, performance management, 7% strategies and corporate finance, capital allocation, 8%, merger and acquisition support, 6%, supply chain management, logistics and network optimization, and network and inventory and parts optimization, 9%. So these are the kind of things that are happening. In order to understand and take a positive lead, Department of Defense has come up with what they defined as responsible AI. In this particular thing, they define responsible for development, deployment, and use of specific AI functions. That means it's not a general system, but it has a specific role, it has a predefined role, and it will only work and be allowed to work in those particular specified functions. Equitable, it has minimized unintended biases and AI capabilities so that it does not deliberately mislead, misjudge, or misconduce events and personalities or traits and dimensions, traceable, transparent, and auditable methodologies that have been used, data sources that have been adopted, design procedures that were made, and complete documentation of the whole thing so that whatever the AI solution has been designed, we know where it comes from, how it has been designed, and then finally reliable, and it is a well-defined use, safety, security, and effectiveness has been tested and specified, and that has been measured with particular clarity, and end-of-life use that it does not have any diversions in terms of self-ruling, self-aligning those rules do not go beyond the specified limits. Governable, enable and tested for intended functions and not allowed to go into unintended domains, any deviation or unintended behavior to result in disengaging and deactivation of the same. This is the one of the most important aspect of governable, responsible AI, well-balanced data training sets, unbiased algorithms, tested outcomes for intended applications, and reliable behavior under all use scenarios. With this particular thing, we are coming to the end of...